And I want everyone to put themselves in Norma's position here because sometimes that's the only way we can really understand what's going on. Put yourself in her shoes. You have a cancer and you have to wait two months. So you're waiting week in and week out to get the very medicine to treat your cancer, just waiting, knowing that this cancer is inside of you. It is a devastating thing to even think about. But Rodney, I want to bring you into this picture because not, not everyone has a Rodney. And, and for people watching, Rodney is a, is a good man, a, a good husband, a good advocate. How were you able to advocate for her? At first, when things were falling apart, I decided that I had to get involved. And so I went and started calling. You, first, you call your insurance company, and they give you a number to call the pharmacy. You call the pharmacy, and they have different pharmacies. And you go through the, the list of people until you finally find the, the person you should be talking to. And even then, you may have to wait. So one day, you can call for three hours, next six hours, and next day, five hours. You just have to be persistent if you really want to solve the problem, get to the people you want to hear from. Norma, you, you just received chemo this morning, is that right? Yes, I just went through chemotherapy at 8 o'clock this morning. And um, they also had to give me some fluids because my blood pressure was really low. But um, going, through, going through chemo took about an hour and a half. Um, and then I was able to um, come home and I rest. Um, and then the next day, which will be tomorrow, I'll have nausea hit and vomiting and the side effects of chemo, but it's worth having the drugs so that I can have a chance to live. And that's why I just want to applaud you for your strength because through this all, the two of you, and you in particular, Norma, you've dealt with the physical difficulties as well as this unnecessary emotional trauma. And there's nothing else we can call this this is an emotional trauma for a patient. And quite frankly, Dr. Ralph, for you as her doctor, it's emotionally traumatic for, for you as well, for Rodney, watching your, your wife feel this way. And the question we have to ask ourselves is, how did we get to this point? Dr. Ralph's trying to do the right thing. In a system 100%. 100%. that makes it very difficult at times for the right thing to be done. And it's so sad because there are so many people making money in this system. Well, and it is, it is people like Norma that slip through the cracks. I want to say one thing, though, because I, I feel horrible for your case, Norma, and it's the most extreme example. But I'll tell you, as a practicing physician, this is playing out on so many levels across the board with any pharmaceutical benefit. Norma's a great example. She was paying $2,000 a month for her insurance, and she still wasn't getting coverage. I have patients who walk into my office every single day and I'll prescribe drug A because I think that's the best choice for what they need. And then it's not on formulary. I have to fill out a prior authorization. I'll waste, my staff will waste hours and a generic medication that's super cheap because they don't have that deal with the insurance and the pharmaceutical company is not covered. And so this is a really frustrating spiral in medicine across the board. This is an egregious, life-threatening case, it just, but it plays out on much smaller scales for all of us with the regular medicine. Since you're taking every layers, day. Why not helping the patient? The patient pays and they don't get anything for I it. I do believe that the individuals, for the most part in the system, would love to do the right thing. But you're right. So, so people are making money, there's kickbacks, there's all sorts of crazy stuff going on. But really quickly, because we, we always have to be fair, I do see the positive role of a PBM. Because there are also plenty of scenarios where there might be three or four incredibly efficacious drugs, and one or two of those four might be 30 times more expensive. Because the other part of our healthcare system is we are a bankrupt healthcare system. And we are, this is all happening, mind you, in a country where we spend double any other country in the world. And we have the worst healthcare outcomes for the most part in many of the developed countries in the world. That's just the truth. Look at the data. The only way we change it is if all of us become involved and we put pressure so that the system changes. We can have all good people in the healthcare system, but if the system is broken, it doesn't matter.